Hey guys, it's Julie. How's everybody doing? Hope you're enjoying lunch on this Thursday afternoon. It's almost Friday. Friday. One more day. Um, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit today about, today I'm talking about two things in your life that you weren't born with, but they try to take over your identity. They try to hijack who you are and you have the ability to get free from those things and not to let them hold you back. They are big burdens. Um, but first I want to tell you the story I was thinking last night about my oldest daughter Miranda and she's going to be 16 in one month from today. And um, the things y'all have to know about Miranda, number one is she is full of surprises. So she actually was a surprise. Surprise! She's here. Um, so she's been surprising us her whole life. And, um, and then she surprised us three weeks early, which is awesome. Especially when you, A, haven't finished your birthing class, two, or B, don't have a backpack for the hospital, and three, your husband and his buddies go shopping for your hospital bag while you're <laughs> in the hospital. Thank you for that, guys. Um, and so she surprised us by coming three weeks early, and then she surprised us so much that they didn't even have time for an epidural. She came so fast, and that was also awesome. Um, if you like getting hit by a truck. <laughs> but anyway, you know, hey, props out to all you women who are having epidurals and are not having epidurals and you're having babies. You guys are the superheroes of the world, let me tell you. Either way, it's it's a road. But anyway, so, you know, she was came out, we were looking at her, and she looked like Popeye. Popeye. She had like one eye open and one eye closed like this the whole time. And, um... And I said what any first-time mother would say the first time they see their baby. What I said was, does she have two eyeballs? Because um, I thought she maybe only had one eye. <laughs> she had one eye closed. And um, anyway, and then I remember that um, they handed her to Damien. And he, he took her in his arms and he just started talking to her. And right in that moment when she heard his voice, she stopped crying. She had been crying the whole time. She stopped crying, and she was just looking up with him, at him with these these big eyes, just staring at him, and there was such a, a moment that happened. And, you know, I started kind of thinking about, you know, she was born with two eyes, and um, but, you know, when she was born, there were some things that she already was wired for. She was wired for love. She was wired for um, touch, like all those things that every baby, including you, including me, including all that, when we're born, we're actually wired for love. So we already have an, that affection for the voices that we um, are hearing, for maybe the smells we're smelling, I don't know, whatever. Um, but it, 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 we have an affection for the people that are there, that imprint that takes place. But there's a couple of things that I've just been realizing that, you know, we're not wired for that. And those things come into our life later on to try to take over who we are. The first one that you're not wired for that you weren't born with is fear. You are not born to be fearful. Fear is learned. And we somehow, through all of our experiences, through maybe growing up, through things that people have said, through the news, through TV, we take on this persona of fear. And we have this thing that rises up. And when circumstances happen, it elicits an emotion in us that is fear. And it's fear-based. But the question is why? Every thought that you have is it only can either be based in love or fear. That's how our brain works. And we have a learned response to, to um, be fearful of those things. And the thing is, when Miranda was born, and I told you the whole story, she wasn't laying there looking at Damien thinking, oh man, I hope you have enough money to pay for my bills for the next five years. And she wasn't thinking, I wonder where my next um, meals going to come from. She wasn't afraid and neither were you when you were born. You were fear free. And then the second thing I want to talk about that we begin to live with as we grow up, that we learn, it's a learned behavior, is shame. Shame can come because of things that you've done, things that have been done to you through no fault of your own. It can even come through things that people are saying about you that are not true and you take on this burden of feeling the shame and it so infiltrates your life that 20 years down the road you're making decisions based off of whatever happened that caused you shame in, in trying to avoid that shame. But guess what? When Miranda was born and when you were born and when all the babies were born, they weren't laying there thinking, 
oh, I'm, I'm just not good enough for this. I'm not good enough for this love. I'm not good enough for this world. No, there was no shame. And if you're a faith-based person, and, and I am, and if you are, if you go back to like the Garden of Eden, when they were there, there was no shame and there was no fear when they started out. So I just wanted to encourage you guys to let you know today that the fear and shame, those are the two things that try to hijack our identities. You were not born for either one of those things. Let me tell you, you were born to live in love, to be rooted in love, to have your thoughts rooted in love. And when you do that, you're going to be so healthy. So every time you feel that thought coming up, that's a shame thought or a fear thought, I want you to stop and analyze it and kind of think about it. Why am I feeling this way? Where did I learn this from and when you decide to go the other way with that thought and not to just put it back in there as another fear or shame thought but you decide no this is a learned behavior I am not going to um, succumb to this behavior it will actually release chemicals in your body that cause you to feel peaceful that cause you to feel happy that cause you to feel full so just you know if you're thinking like Julie what do you really want from me today what do you want from this five minutes what I want is for you to realize that you're not meant for shame and you're not meant for fear. You are meant for love and you're meant to prosper and you're meant to do good things and to live the fullest life that you can and to realize that you have the power to change those things that are coming through your mind because they're not who you are, they're not who you were meant to be, and they're not who you were born to be. So I know that was kind of like a heavy dose of whatever today, but just want to say that. And um, I love you all. I hope you have a really great day. And just be free from that shame and fear. It's not you. All right. Love you all. Bye.